So, we're leaving the beach. Day two of conference. We're gonna get some coffee and get dressed in our official newbies Day gear. Day two of the conference! I mean, <laughs> so it, it will stick with you. You're going to fail. You're going to be distracted. You you'll be sad. Only you continue. So what you do to light smoker? Again, depends how you learn. Depends who your advisor. Depends what your uh, uh, experience, whatever, right? And uh, and obviously where you are. If you in middle of nowhere and you have nothing, what you're going to use? Probably lighter, right, from your car. Up here, because we are uh, in a place where we can do many things, right? So here is my uh, smoker. Anybody sees what's wrong with this? What's it's all dirty. <laughs> You didn't clean it first? It's 25 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and That's it, older than you, you are. Look, it's repaired a million times yeah. and it works. So, you remember frugal? I drive over at least one a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only when you become a little bit bigger beekeeper, how often, uh, most often, how you lost, lost your smoker? Uh, under the truck tire. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And it, it's not only big beekeepers. Most often, you you put, you forgot, and you drive through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That that, hopefully it's not lit. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, hopefully yeah. you didn't light it too well. That's most most common. And if you work for somebody, like a commercial, you work with commercial beekeeper, that's punishment what you're going to receive most often. Yep. From losing your smoker or losing your, your, <laughs> your, or losing your hive tool. Yep. Hive tool. Yeah. Yeah. Driving so over a bee do, do you need smoker? It's up to you. If you like a Sam, he never used smoker. Sure I do. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Only you, if you already uh, start building tolerance, your tolerance to uh, stings, practically you don't need, right? My uh, uh, start half of my beekeeping life was in Europe. In Europe, we never use gloves. In Europe, we never dress that space suit, right? We work uh, as you are. If you live with not as tolerant, so just put a long sleeve. And it depends how long you plan to work with your smoker. If you plan to work for an hour or two hours, so you have to really pack oh, that smoker. It's working no problem. Additionally, especially if you use very dry material, it, it will burn very fast. Why I pick yeah. up uh, uh, Brazilian pepper? Yeah. Lots of essential oil. Very high uh, 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 antibacterial properties. If you have any wound, take Brazilian like like pe pepper yeah. honey, oh, apply a really couple nice. times, it will it uh, heal about four times faster than without anything. So always put something green on top and you're ready to go, right? When you're working with uh, smoker, you have to understand temperature of smoker, uh, that's temperature of uh, 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 air, right? And up here, yeah, so it's not too much. Your smoker have to be small have to be cold mm -hmm. not hot so for you to understand right now i'm going to in increase so enough smoke for everybody <laughs> wow <laughs> very very low so when you work with bees remember bees doesn't like smoke because bees smell everything that's how they orient everything this not talk, right? This doesn't have telephone. Understandable? So they, they take take that very fast. It doesn't take too too much. Don't use too much uh, 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 smoke, even in hot. When you open, probably... Let's see. 
That's it. That's what you need. And look, they immediately go, go away. <laughs> don't give too, too much the small in. You have to check first when you come to your geese. You, you look activity and, and what wearing else? the proper dress. More Both important than just activity. <laughs> availability of food, right? In order to see food, you don't have to go inside and start digging. You come, slightly lift, and you have to train yourself. If I have two, two frames of honey, that's wait what I should, right? In this case, next, next time, and you don't have to lift very far, just slightly to, to feel how much. And you see good activity, like up here, bees bringing pollen, what is the indication? Green brood. Raising brood, right? When bees doesn't doesn't have queen, doesn't have uh, larva, so they they not going to be very active. They will be sitting waiting for something. When bees ready for uh, swarming, they will be sitting on uh, uh, front uh, panel of your your hive, right? Only when you go inside of uh, hive, again, why you have to go through all? 10 frames. What you looking for? Right? When you go and you see something outside, <laughs> something fishy, uh, who, who was uh, on meeting when we have uh, 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 Bini, Bini, uh, what's his uh, name? Bob Bini. Bob Bini. Yeah. Who, who was on that meeting? That was there. Only he, he tell you. So don't go pick up and after when you go inside, one frame. Take frame from needle, not from a si side. Nicely prime that frame, take it out. Look on it, right? When you take it out, be very slow. Spend that time on pulling out that frame instead of pulling 10 frames. Only one frame, slow, right? So you're not going to roll bees, you're not going to kill anything and so forth. On that needle frame, you, you see all picture. If you're not there yet to read mm -hmm. from outside, right? Only have your smoker ready all the time, right? Understandable? Biggest problem with uh, smoker, when you leave somewhere uh, on uh, uh, grass, which is dry, mm. right? Scorching. You start big yes. problem. Very often you, you're going to see beekeepers uh, 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 use smoker and after put something in, uh, uh, in in opening right mm. so, yeah you you name it no airflow muffles no, it out uh, yeah. uh, sustain uh, yeah. uh, oxygen in smoker it no burning and so forth so relatively easy right some beekeepers it's not very uh, if you go in uh, <laughs> that military second uh, whatever store you go you buy metal box De dedicated for your smoker, mm. for your sometimes uh, your um, uh, hive tool, right? You put there, it's very safe. Never leave smoker behind you. Even you work at home, don't put, oh, it's safe. Yeah, mm. it's safe for this moment. Mm. What happened in half an hour? You know, uh, uh, when the firefighter come to your home and your uh, home is burning, what they're going to do? Try they to wait to until it it's burn completely yeah right? they're not going to uh, endanger their life for a house. a house which already burning right yeah. so remember your house important right and sometimes you, you leave a smoker on field and whole field can burn including your bees fire extinguisher and we have a bucket of water yes. here yeah <laughs> if you want to understand what does it mean fire on uh, uh, apiary we have a uh, commercial beekeeper, Chris Warner, he had presented twice. His uh, whole uh, uh, operation was burned. Oh. Yeah, when nobody was home. And when, oh, no. and, and, and he had very, very big building. This building was full with uh, boxes, supers. Firefighters come, they cannot come closer than 200 feet. Wow. So it was hot fire. These beams was banded like nothing yeah. yeah so temperature especially when you have all uh, dry equipment 
God forbid you have a, a vaccine in it. It's burned very, very, very hot. It's uh, practically melted uh, 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 metal. So it's at least 1800 mm. degrees Celsius. It's about 2400 degrees of Fahrenheit. Very hot. So safety, priority, right? And he's still mm. the keeper. He was under big stress for one summer because bees outside, he need super to super these bees, no supers, so everybody helped him. Only when he come down, uh, uh, insurance paid money, he rebuilt much beautiful house, his operation. <laughs> <laughs> and other questions? Who invented that smoker? Oh! <laughs> So, who's the real uh, uh, commercial beekeeper? First real commercial beekeeper? Moses Quimby. No. <laughs> no. You're wrong? Say Someone... Valentine. Huh? No. I know I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Ukraine, we, uh, we had the uh, uh, beekeeper Prokopovich. Right. He invent real movable frame hive. He invented, he sure? even we, we talk, uh, extruder, we talk about uh, uh, Mor Morton in uh, 1854, only in to, uh, 1814, he presented his uh, hive for everybody. We still using principle of that hive right now. Excluder was included in that hive 40 years before official uh, a discovery excluder. Mm -hmm. So Prokopovich had in yeah. that time. So why I say? Because in 1832 he had 10,000 hives in operation. <laughs> he he had the uh, uh, beekeeping school in order to be beekeeper. Uh, in that time, obviously, it was uh, like a slavery way to live in in the Poland. Russian Empire. So in order to become the keeper, you have to go through school first. It's, uh, for me, it's, I, I not, uh, even not imagine why you guys suffering. Because if you go to school, it, does, it doesn't matter, uh, two, three months, uh, usually in Europe, it's one year vocational school. When you go to school, you learn basic and you never trip in, during your beekeeping. Right now, Small uh, uh, lighting uh, smoker, it has to be explained by somebody in school that's done uh, in appropriate way, and you, you learn biology because biology of bees most important part for us to understand. If you know what doesn't, uh, what colony, why, why uh, you have to uh, restrict uh, 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 smoke when you're working with bees, I already explained to you four hours, that's five days without food larvae. What kind of bees going to be born for, uh, for that larva what was in starvation mode? Understandable? So all these small things, you have to work extremely hard to find this information in English literature. For some reason, we talk about everything. Even today we have panel, we was talking about uh, uh, nutrition and researchers practically don't mention nutrition. If you don't have food in, in hive, Baroa doesn't matter. Propylapsis, nobody talk about it. You need food. Second, it'd be what? Smoker. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong answer. Yeah, green. Mm -hmm. Green, right? Quality of green. Because if you don't have food and you have good queen, what happened? Nothing. She's not going to lay eggs if no nectar, right? If you not feed her, if you not feed the colony, right? So, food number one. For example, here is a, a Brazilian pepper. If you ask any beekeeper in the United States, how much nectar produce Brazilian pepper? You say, I don't know, I don't care. Really? You need, you need to provide colony with 250 pounds of honey per year for their life. If you don't have this 250 uh, uh, pounds, what will be happen? Chin-chin, chin-chin, chin-chin. You have to feed them, right? 
how much is it cost? Uh, uh, Sam can tell you. I don't right? want to think about it. <laughs> Fancy, right? Right. So yeah, crazy. these small things you have to learn on your own. When you have chance, come to any meeting. You're going to pick up spec of information, and after you have to process this information in in college, we call ability to answer critical thinking questions. Right. So you'll be able to do that if you. If you want to be beekeeper, you have to be lifelong learner. And obviously, when you have, uh, when you lifelong uh, learner, you'll be what? Live long, right? Live and, long, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Understandable? Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? That makes sense. That's a nice way to put it. It's a very nice way to put it. I'm a teacher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm here with Dr. Sashenko. You had some of my favorite presentations of the weekend, so I want to say thank you, first of all, for uh, giving us the knowledge that you were able to provide to us this weekend. Can I ask for one tip for new beginner beekeepers? Learn honey plants. Understand them, what they do for bees. Brilliant. That's it. Brilliant. Thank you so much. No problem. Dr. Priya Chakrabarti Basu, and she's going to give us one beginner tip for new beekeepers. Make sure your colonies are well fed. Either they have access to natural pollen and nectar forage in the landscape, or you're providing supplemental feeding. You should always be able to reach out to a senior beekeeper in your local bee club because they can always help you and guide you with these resources. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm here with Ben from Zombie Coffee. Ben, aside from just supporting other beekeepers, give me one good reason to buy this wonderful coffee you have here. So another reason is that all of our coffee is roasted fresh the day that you order it. So we basically roast it that day, ship it that day, and you have your coffee fresh to your doorstep within three to five business days. Brilliant. The freshest coffee from the freshest beekeepers. Thank you so much. We really all right. appreciate it. Thank you. Here with Tracy with Hal Butler. Tracy, give us one new tip for beginner beekeepers. The most important tip I have for new beekeepers is to get connected locally. Beekeeping is very local with weather and flora, um, and finding that tribe that can help you in so many ways is my number one tip. Yeah, absolutely, you gotta have that, that here. Stephen Osborne, how do you help beekeepers? About 25 years ago, one of the biggest beekeepers in Texas that had serious insurance problems they came to us and said can you help us out and we wrote their insurance and we've got about four different insurance companies we write beekeepers all over the country hawaii california florida but it's, it's a tremendous niche these are first place certificates stephanie smith here Stephanie Smith, first place light extracted. Is there a Stephanie Smith here? First place photography. Oh, yeah. Is Glenn Messler here? Glenn got first place in the black jar. What? Let me give. Let me also tell you this, Glenn, because of that black jar entry. Also got best in show. Yeah. Oh. Please come up and inspect, take out your notes. The notes were done by our my wonderful daughter Katie and stuff. So she's still working on Christmas, but come up, check out, ask questions. My assistant judges were Krista, Jim, and Heather. Okay, Scott's over there somewhere. And Will was our secretary. You did an awesome job. There he is, there's our West Virginia. They're our first place. Wow. We're so excited. Thank you. <laughs>